Today is March 30th and I just put these fava beans outside to harden off a little bit. Uh, you can see how well they've grown. It's been about three days since I filmed the last video. Uh, you can see they've grown a little bit more. I fertilized them a couple days after I filmed the video or one day after I filmed the video. And now I'm gonna let them sit over here for 30 minutes before I move them inside. I do have them in direct sunlight, but that's because it is cool outside. Right now it is uh, 45 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, the temperatures are fluctuating uh, pretty bad over here. We've had uh, nights and days below freezing. If I do put them outside uh, to plant once they're ready after they've been hard enough then uh, hold on baby then uh, i would probably want to protect them with something i might put uh, some hoops over them and some frost protectant just to make sure that they're going to uh, have a pretty good chance at surviving the fluctuation of the weather we still uh, do get snow in this area sometimes even up until may <laughs> okay, i think the year of 2020 we got snow on may 9th so nothing is uh too strange over here <laughs> so uh, uh and these are frost hardy so you know once they get acclimated to outer temp temperature temperatures then they would be okay but if i were if we were expecting snow or like extreme cold temperatures i'd probably want to cover them um, just to make sure that they're not going to get frost damage this cutie over here who still doesn't have her hair brushed <laughs> wants to go outside and play are you cold it's nice in the sun yeah. you want your boots yeah she always wants to be outside. Hello everyone, this is Chantel. So today I'm doing this a little bit different. It's uh, sort of a vlog style, um, just because I have a lot of chores that I need to be done over here. A couple days ago, we received our compost uh, order, which uh, we were able to order the same day. I, uh, uh, I recorded the video that uploaded before this video and um, we got it basically the next day. That was a blessing. <laughs> I'm super happy with that, but I haven't been able to get out there and work with it because it was super windy for the past two days and super cold. It was freezing temperatures, um, below freezing actually. So still her hair not fixed, her face dirty, <laughs> and her hands from eating, and boots over there as well, of course, because kids. Um, so uh, yeah, we are going right now through the garlic that I had pulled up from our garden from last year. I know it looks like a total disaster, uh, but it really isn't. We, this is how far we got. And this is just some bad potatoes and all the stuff that are coming off from the garlic because, you know, last season um, she was little and I wasn't actually able to do much and now she's helping look at her good job serenity oh yeah. uh, did you take it off oh good job look at you you did such a good job oh you put some in here too there we go i mean they're opening like the shells are uh getting off of the cloves right now but that's okay maybe i would probably take these cloves and freeze them or something we'll see what we'll do with them and uh you know it was muddy as usual in the fall and that's why they're all like this hopefully this season i'll be able to have a, a um, better luck with cleaning them before oh no mama not here uh, before I uh, put them inside and oh can mama take that yeah can mama take it this one is good thank you good job serenity you're doing such a good job look at you helping oh what's that um oh. yeah 
Oh, look, you take the bottom off. So some of them, because I left them a little bit too long um, in the ground, some of them started sprouting and created more small cloves. So they look sort of like this or like a little onion. Um, but those are just the cloves that got separated from the ones over here because it took me a little bit to pull them up out of the ground um, and they started creating new cloves. Uh, but you can see all the dirt that was on them because it's so muddy. Uh, and the ideal thing that I would have done would have been to let them dry in the garage in a place that's sheltered from rain and then just take like a vegetable brush uh, scrub or something like that and um, scrub all this dirt off and then put them in a basket in the basement but these have been stored in our basement the whole winter and I've been going through them and using them they've been great you gotta take this off beautiful Good job. Look at you. You know what you're doing. Good job. Can you pull the roots off? Can you pull the roots? Thank you. Yes. Serenity, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, she got her hair brushed, her farm boots on, and she's ready to go play outside with her big brother, right? Yep, we just finished up with the garlic. She was such a good helper. Are you a good helper? Yeah. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> so I just brought these fava beans inside and they seem pretty happy. And over here, this is the garlic. That's how much we got out of it. What I'm gonna do I'm gonna, is I'm gonna go through them. And if I see any that I have lost their outer skin, like this one, for example, uh, or about to lose their outer skin, I'm just going to wash them, chop them up, and remove any blemishes off of them, and then put them in the freezer. And the ones that are still okay, I'm just gonna put them back in the basement. And uh, I'd probably wanna put them in a different container than this because uh, I feel like they'd probably go bad quicker in this I'm not sure so I, I think so though I don't know I need to do some more research on long-term storage for garlic because um, I mean they did well but I would like them to store a bit longer in my current conditions we just have a basement we don't have a root cellar so I would like to know how to keep them uh, stored better in the basement uh, to do well. Of course, you know, as you can see, I didn't in the first place store them properly because they had dirt on them and all that stuff, you know, but having a toddler again, that was, uh, was she a toddler even? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I think she was a toddler. Anyways, yes, she was a toddler. Uh, yes, having a toddler, you know, and that's super young and just wanting to constantly have you hold them and be with you and all that doesn't let me do much. So, but I'm super happy with uh, fava beans and uh, I have high hopes for them. Uh, so far every year I've planted fava beans in the past they just would get aphids and um, they wouldn't grow well outside and many of the seeds would rot again because our outside and because our raised beds get super moist in the spring and then just seeds tend to rot in that environment and uh, I mean by super wet I mean like soggy and it's mud it's not like moist dirt you know so i'm going to be covering them when i put them outside to prevent aphids because aphids seem to be super attracted to them and i'll probably uh, uh of course i'm going to be planting herbs and stuff like that around to repel all these things but they just seem to be aphid attractants so i'll cover them to to 
make sure I'll have some fava bean harvest. <laughs> These fava beans uh, that I got from uh, Baker's Creek are supposed to um, mature in 70 days, so in 70 days they'll be giving me um, fava beans. That's what I'm hoping for. So this is our garlic bed over here. I planted the garlic last fall at night. <laughs> it was gonna snow right after that night. Actually, that the night that I planted it, it planted it, it was my last chance. It was gonna snow and it wasn't gonna stop snowing and uh, and the ground was gonna freeze and that was it. So I just uh, brought in back soil, put them in this bed over here and I planted the garlic and then now in the spring uh, I came and I mulched the bed. Um, I should have mulched it before but that's okay. Uh, you can see over here the garlic is starting to pop up. I don't know if you can see it right where my finger is. A lot of them are starting to pop up. There is one right here and some more. They're everywhere basically. They're still little. Uh, but they're not going to be harvested until around mid-July and somewhere around there and hopefully this year's garlic harvest would be better than the last. I'm not going to be able to put compost on that because I don't want to smother the garlic. What I'll do is later on in the season when I know where the garlic is when they got a little bit taller I'll be able to put in compost but I didn't put in some bone meal and I also threw fertilizer when I planted them uh, later on in the season I could probably just throw in some more fertilizer I wanted to I forgot I put in the mulch before I put in the fertilizer but that's okay but I did put in bone meal so that's a bonus <laughs> uh, I can always come back and fertilize it it's not a big deal and even if I just sprinkle it over this uh, mulch it's just gonna leach in to the soil every time it gets watered. So our lawnmower needs to be fixed for the spring because um, it gets a little rusted around the ignition and my husband has to do that and do some oil change and stuff like that so I can't actually use it. I, even if I try turning it on it won't turn on <laughs> so um, maybe that's a good thing for now <laughs> until my husband fixes it. So I'm not gonna be able to use this giant trailer over here unfortunately uh, to haul the compost in so instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a bucket to put it on our broken wheelbarrow and haul the compost in by hand not what I was looking for but that's okay it's worth it so that's my jig over here <laughs> that's gonna take forever um, my, our what my husband did with a broken rope barrel is that he put up some plywood on it, I think, and just formed this thing, and he wants to use it for transporting his bee equipment and stuff like that. This is why he did this this thing. My only other transportation is the trailer, and the lawnmower is not working right now, so uh, I'm afraid to put more than this bucket over here because I don't want it to spill over, so I'm just going to do this bucket and because I don't feel like carrying it that's gonna be heavy a lot of dirt and all that the wheelbarrow I think transporting it in the wheelbarrow is gonna be a better option
so as you can see I well you can't see <laughs> I just put in six of these buckets into this raised bed over here and I leveled it in with a rake and I think now I'm going to cover the rest of the raised beds with cardboard one bed at a time and do the same and then if I have some more leftover compost then I would probably add more. I'm going to top off the beds probably with the soil that I bought um, because it looks like the bed needs more uh, because the cardboard uh, wasn't covered with a thick layer of compost. I really wish we bought the eight yards of compost instead of the five. Lesson learned next time. Uh, probably ne not next year or it could be I don't know depending on our projects what would they be so let me show you a couple of the raised beds that I haven't tweeted yet and um, see what we're what we can do about them this bed over here uh, of course as you can see I have some uh, kitchen scraps in here that I'm gonna be covering with the cardboard and the and the compost but this bed had had green onions in it, the um, uh, bunching onions or Asian onions uh, for uh, two to three years. I, w I tried killing them the first year, they came back the next year because I just kind of laid them over the bed and um, they just sprouted, they, their, roots, their roots reached into the soil and then sprouted back up. But you can see this bed is super low on soil. Uh, a um, I think a groundhog came in and kind of dug on this side of the bed and removed a lot of the soil over here and um, also just you know over the years soil compaction and also when you weed and when you remove plants from the soil the soil tends to uh, be picked up away from the bed along with the weeds and the plants that you remove from the bed Oh, that along with compaction so the beds over the years just become super low on soil now even though I am feeding them with compost and fertilizer and all that again they're super low on soil but the problem here let me show you again in this bed and in the next bed next so actually this bed isn't super bad this bed I can cover it not not have any problems the grass that's growing in here is like about to die it's only a, like they're just sprouting a tiny bit it's not a big deal I can cover this bed and I think I don't have to weed it I think I would be okay because I don't see like any tough weeds in here this bed however has creeping Charlie in it right here you see it? And sorry about the sight. Um, I told my son to like spread it over here and he just threw it in one spot. Not a big deal. Um, so it has Creeping Charlie and there's also moss growing everywhere because this bed is super wet. I'm hoping that if I cover it I'd be able to kill it because as you know Creeping Charlie, if you pull it... Spare you the sight of the <laughs> gross stuff in the bed. <laughs> That are going to be covered up soon. Uh, Creeping Charlie, if you pull it, uh, it tends to come back again because it grows through rhizomes and it also spreads seeds over the ground and then sprouts from those seeds as well. And of course this is a vegetable garden so I don't want to spray. I'm not going to try to weed it. I might remove some of it. I might remove the grass that I see in here. But I'm going to cover it. Then if I see it again, I'm going to cover again and put some more compost or soil over it. I wish, I really hope, that I would be able to put a lot of compost in this bed because as you can see it's like depleted and by putting a thick layer that would prevent anything from coming up again um, because you want to prevent them from reaching the light that's what would help with that. So we'll see I might have to do this over and over again for a period of time uh, but I have to keep in mind that I need compost for my two raised beds that I'm going to be planting the grapevines in and also strawberries as well. You see all the dirt? 
that gets picked up. But this grass isn't that much of a problem. It's just that it sort of bunches up on top. And um, I just want to make it easier for me uh, to put the cardboard down without any problem. This is the grass that could cause a problem, I think. I think this is Bermuda grass. If I'm right, I actually need something to pull it up. I thought if it's small I could. Well, it's okay. I pulled it up. Not a big deal. My hands are getting dirty. I wish I had gloves. Uh, I hate much. Okay. There we go. I'm, I'm just going to remove only a little bit over here. What I have over here. And the rest I'm just going to cover up. I think I should be okay. I wish I brought my gloves with me. And I'm hoping that the plants that I leave are going to feed the soil as they turn into, as they decompose under the cardboard, along with the cardboard. That's my hope. And not come up again through the cardboard, because that would just be a pain. <laughs> So this is the raised bed that I just got. Uh, my husband put it together for me. It is a 3 by 12 raised bed. And uh, right now it is in the apiary garden, but it is actually going to go um, in that area over there behind the raised beds and a little bit over them. And this is where our vineyard is gonna start. I'm gonna have one that's gonna be a little bit below it and then we're going to expand a little bit to our uh, to where the all this shrubbery is we're going to be clearing it and also uh, putting in uh, some more vineyards that's gonna you know it's gonna be a process over time but that's the plan i'm tired <laughs> i just finished filling three beds with compost and topped the one that the first one that I did this spring over here uh, with three buckets of compost. The rest, each of, in each bed I put seven buckets of compost. I went back to the first bed and I put another bucket because I felt it was a little bit too low. I'm probably going to be able to put more compost but for now that's what it's going to be. And I still have five more beds. In the bed that I have garlic planted I'm not going to be able to put any compost now uh, maybe in the fall uh, or in the summer when I pull the garlic I'll just buy some compost from the store and back compost and put it in I was putting cardboard in that bed over there um, right now I'm gonna finish up uh, I'm gonna stop over here actually uh, just clean up what I did probably just finish that bed with a cardboard just so that it's uniform um, and it won't like curl up and stuff like that and makes it more difficult for me to finish later um, and I'm gonna clean up and that's it for today and I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'll be uh, putting a playlist on this corner over here um, and of gardening playlist or because I, I did a lot of related things that if you want to learn more about the fava beans you can watch the previous video I'll be linking it down below if you want to learn about the reason why I do this with my beds I will be also linking that video down in the description box below so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next time 